Shavua Tov, a good vach. I want to share another story of how the Rebbe manages to answer those who have a connection with him. And just in a way, it's not surprising that after the Rebbe's passing, he's able to connect even more when there's a connection. In the year 2002, which is the hundredth year since the Rebbe's birth, there was a shliach in Germany, I believe his name was Rabbi Pressmann, who was very active and many, many Russians were now coming to his part of the world. And there was even a flow of money making it available. But a board was formed and a chairman, and all the money had to go through them for all the activities he was trying to do in his city. And unfortunately, the chairman of this board was not very pro-religion, was not very pro-spending money on mitzvahs, and he made the shliach life very, very miserable, very, very difficult. And the final straw was in the days before Pesach, the shliach happened to be driving with his wife, his cell phone rang in the car, and it was this chairman exploding on him and telling him, why are you spending so much money on matzah? Why are you spending money in hotels and public seders? I'm not going to give you a penny of this money towards that. And the shliach hung up the phone, and it was like the final straw. His life has just been made so difficult, he has so much to do, so many people to do it with, and this guy is making his life miserable. They come home, they're both very quiet, very down, and the rabbi turns to his wife and says, I hate to say these words, but I think it's time to think about thinking about maybe leaving our shlichot, leaving our city, because this man is making life too miserable. Shabbos night, they look at the mail that came, I mean, at that night, they looked at the mail that came in that day, and a magazine called the Kfar Chabad came, with a special edition celebrating the hundredth year since the Rebbe's birth. And he opens up the magazine, and he sees a section that says a hundred short stories of the Rebbe. And the first story that he sees is told by the Rebbe's, one of the Rebbe's secretaries, Rabbi Benjamin Klein, where he says that there was once a shliach, a representative of the Rebbe to a city who was experiencing many, many difficulties, and he wrote to the Rebbe asking for a bracha to be relieved of his mission and be allowed to leave the city and return back to New York. And the Rebbe said to his secretary, I don't understand. If he's writing to me and he's asking for a blessing, why does he ask for a blessing to leave his post? Why doesn't he ask for a blessing for the difficulties to go away and be able to stay where he belongs. <laughs> Rabbi Pressman turns to his wife after reading this story and he says, forget it, forget the thought that we thought about thinking, we are staying. And shortly after this, the difficulties with this chairman cleared up and they were able to return to their great successes and they lived happily ever after. Many years go by, I think on 15 years went by, this is like 2017, 2018, and it's the month of Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and Sukkot, and they would bring down a number of young men, boys, to help them with the activities of the holidays, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot. And after Yom Kippur, there was a little bit of a lull, and the boys said to the rabbi, what can we do to help today? And he said, maybe clean up the area where we're going to build our sukkah. There's been a lot of accumulated bags and who knows what. So the boys listened and started cleaning up, and they happened to find the Kfar Chabad magazine. These magazines always have stories and, and a lot of interesting things. So they came to the house and said, hey, look what we found while we were cleaning up. He looks at the magazine from 2002, that 100th birthday of the Rebbe, and all of a sudden it hits him and his wife that this is the magazine that inspired them to stay at their post and continue their mission and thank God they were blessed with incredible success. So the first thing he does is he opens up the magazine to find the story that so inspired him. He opens up and he cannot find the story. There's a hundred stories, he reads all 100 of them. This story is nowhere to be found. His head is spinning. He thinks maybe there were two versions of the magazine, and the one I saw was a different version. So he calls Israel, 
and gets in touch with the magazine's editors, and they said no. There was only one printing. That's the one you have in your hands. So this story from the Rebbe, and this message of the Rebbe, to ask for a bracha, to be able to continue at your post and do what you have to do, somehow reached them in the magazine, but it wasn't in the magazine. I can't explain that, but as we've told in a previous story, when we're connected to something higher, we don't fall down and we manage to do what we have to do. May we all be very connected, have a great, amazing week.